We're here at the AHA in New Orleans and we just saw a major landmark study. We are moving in the lipid field into a direction we are familiar with from hypertension, with having available different therapies that we can tailor and use and target according to the individual risk profile and combine, use combination therapy early. So exciting days with a lot of new therapies on the horizon and interesting studies presented today. We just saw very exciting sessions on new data on lipids and congratulations uh, for performing the Vesalius CV study, a really landmark trial. What are the main results? Yes, yeah, so Vesalius uh, was a, a long-term study, four and a half years follow-up of Evolocumab, a PCSK9 inhibitor. So they could not have had a prior MI or stroke. They may have had atherosclerotic disease or they may have had high-risk diabetes. And, what we learned from this trial was that uh, lowering the LDL down close to 40 milligrams per deciliter with evolocumab starting on average in the 120s, uh, reduced uh, cardiovascular composite events, reduced myocardial infarction alone by 36%, reduced all-cause mortality by 20%, and did so safely. What are the number needed to treat and what are the data on safety yeah. with these yeah. low levels of LDL? Right. The mortality findings were very robust. 20% reduction in all-cause mortality, and safety really no difference in adverse safety events except for more deaths in the placebo mm -hmm. arm. How, how would that ex uh, affect our daily practice? Yeah, good question. Uh, you know, I think uh, we're in a territory where yet again, we're seeing evidence that even lower is even better. I think NICE supports the EAS ESC goals of going below 55 for this group and even going below 40 milligram per deciliter for those with progressive Extreme disease. Extreme risk, yeah. yes. Yeah. You were involved in the Vesalius Reel uh, that looked at, uh, you know, how we're doing treating patients in clinical practice out there outside of clinical trials. Can you share what you learned there? The questions we are asking there is how it's a situation in the real world. This is a truly global initiative, collecting real world data sets from all over the world, all continents, different countries. And unfortunately, the result is pretty straightforward and, and simple. We are not doing well. We are not treating our high risk patients uh, to target. 80% of uh, the study population in the real world is not at target. So plenty of room for improvement. Yeah. Well. So this is LDL cholesterol, very important, key target. However, this is not everything with regard to lipids. There are also mm -hmm. triglycerides, yeah. difficult to treat, especially in the, for the very high TG yeah. patients. Congratulations again to the Boston group for a second important set of studies, the CORE studies. Yeah. What are they about? So CORE and CORE2 were two identical studies looking at patients with severe hypertriglyceridemia, meaning above 500 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, and they were treated with a, a, an agent that targets APOC3, which is a key step in the production of triglycerides. And we saw a dramatic lowering of triglycerides uh, down from an average of, in the two trials, seven, eight hundreds or so, uh, down to 150 in the treated group, um, which is terrific. I mean, large reduction in triglycerides, but even more important, uh, very low rates of pancreatitis. That's the real risk for these patients with severe HTG, is they, they live at risk of pancreatitis if they eat wrong, if they take a little bit of alcohol, and, uh, uh, you know, in the highest risk cohort, an 85% reduction in pancreatitis. In Germany and other European countries, we are limited in the use of an APOC3 inhibitor to patients with the genetic disease, the yeah. FCS, the familiar Chalumal leukemia syndrome. Now, this study extends the population. Right. There was a, another study presented in the same uh, session by Stephen Nichols from Australia yeah. using a DNA targeting therapy. Yeah. Uh, and in, protein like three protein with a CRISPR cas based system, yeah. small number of patients, but, the, but conceptually I thought it was a fascinating yeah. study. I, I agree. I mean, imagine a day where we can modify uh, the genes that are regulating atherogenic lipoproteins and it's a one and done. Uh, so this is, as you mentioned, a phase one study, but a broad range of patients, very promising. And so there'll be more on this story, I'm sure. We'll see, it, it may move the field from treatment to cure. We are not yeah. there yet, but that's, that's the, conceptually yeah. Yeah. the vision. And I guess the last one we should discuss is this interesting uh, uh, triple agent uh, from China, 
uh, targeting both cardiac and metabolic risk factors. Interesting compound. It's an FGF21 agonist combined with a glucagon agonist and a GLP-1 receptor agonist in one molecule. It was tested in patients with very high triglycerides. High-level data presented today showing potent effects on triglyceride lowering and potent effect on liver fat content. Yeah. So could be a potential way of targeting metabolic disease, both from the yeah. perspective of lipids, but also from the perspective of fatty liver disease. Early data, phase two, so we will see where this uh, yeah. leads. So in summary, I think um, what I came out of the session very excited. I, I think in the lipid field, we are moving into an arena that we are familiar with from hypertension using individualized treatment, uh, combining therapies, individual combined treatments earlier. And um, we saw important new data and, and there are many studies on the way. So we can look forward to um, provide hopefully better treatment to our patients. Agreed.